Uh, hello there and uh, welcome back to the third part of this series. So in the previous video we have implemented the navigation component and we have also designed our uh, home fragment. So uh, as you can see it looks uh, basically the same as uh, from our design project right here. And uh, in this video we're going to focus on uh, creating some animations in our uh, home fragment. So as you can see inside our design project right here uh, we have this uh, animation artboard. So basically we have one uh, green background and we have this uh, check mark icon. And uh, we're going to create uh, animation out of those uh, two assets. So the first thing uh, I'm going to export this uh, check mark icon uh, as a vector file so I can actually import that vector file in my uh, Android Studio project. So I'm going to export that as a SVG. Okay and now I'm going to get back to Android Studio to our fragment home layout and before we add that uh, new vector file which we have just exported I'm going to search here for a simple view and I'm going to add that view here on our screen okay. So its uh, initial uh, size will be uh, 1 dp in width and height. So basically it will not be visible at first. Okay so 1 dp in width and height and I'm going to just connect uh, all constraints to a parent so left right top and bottom and I'm going to set uh, 0 uh, dp on margins. Okay so now it will be basically centered on our screen okay. So let me just uh, go down here uh, and I'm going to change its id to say for example success uh, background. So I'm going to set its uh, alpha attribute to 0 so it will be invisible basically and I'm going to add the background uh, attribute here and I'm going to use uh, this uh, teal 200 uh, which is basically a green color. So its background uh, will be this uh, green color. Okay so uh, now that we have added this uh, view we need to import that uh, svg file which we have just exported. So inside our drawable directory let's uh, import a new vector asset. So from our local file and let me just search uh, on my desktop so let me find where it is okay so desktop check mark svg all right click next and finish and uh, now let's uh, add here one uh, image view and i'm going to choose this uh, check mark okay so here is how it will look like so just click okay and also i'm going to connect uh, all constraints to a parent so it can be centered on the screen here so margins set to zero so it can be centered. Okay so let me just scroll down below so I can find it. And I'm going to rename that id to say uh, success image view. Okay so like that. And of course uh, all constraints uh, should be to a parent. So a bottom to a uh, bottom of the parent. Okay so like that. It is now centered. And now I'm going to add the alpha attribute here as well. So its initial uh, visibility will be uh, basically zero uh, opacity so it will not be visible at first and we're going to change its uh, opacity uh, from our home fragment. Okay so now that we have added those two views in our uh, home fragment we can actually open our home fragment and we can start uh, implementing some uh, animations. So the first thing which I need to do is to actually create uh, one uh, on click listener for our generate button. So let's use a binding dot uh, generate button. Okay, so let's set uh, on click listener here. And uh, down below, I'm going to create uh, one new function for uh, basically creating all animations. So I'm going to create a new private fun named apply animations. So this function will have no parameters. And from here, I'm going to start by uh, animating some uh, fields. So I'm going to uh, animate title text view, uh, generate button, then uh, input layout and uh, plain text. So basically first I'm going to start by uh, animating uh, all of those. Uh, so a uh, title text view, then a uh, text input layout, then this plain text and the generate button. And uh, after that I'm going to also animate uh, those two newest uh, views on our screen. So let's switch back to our uh, home fragment. And here I'm going to use a binding object to get the axis of our uh, title text view. So uh, here I'm going to use a method called uh, animate. And here I want to animate uh, alpha value and basically I want to set its alpha value to 0. So just type a 0f because this is a float value and then I'm going to set the actual duration. So duration for this animation can be uh, 400 milliseconds. So uh, next uh, I'm going to call this uh, apply animations function uh, from our on click listener right here. And now let's just uh, run this application on uh, our emulator so you can see how this animation uh, will look like. So uh, basically whenever we click our generate button then our title text view will disappear. Okay so click generate. 
and now you will see that this uh, title uh, has disappeared and our animation uh, works perfectly fine. So the next one is uh, the actual animation for our generate button. So binding dot uh, generate button dot animate. Here I'm going to also animate alpha value so zero float uh, as well and duration can be uh, 400 milliseconds as well. So let's run that again. Okay click generate and now both of those views uh, have disappeared, so perfect. And now let's continue by animating our uh, input layout. So the ID is uh, text input layout, okay. So let's uh, go down below, uh, binding dot text uh, input layout dot uh, animate and here uh, we want to uh, animate uh, two different properties so the first property is alpha value so alpha value to 0 f and the second one is uh, translation x by okay and because we want to animate uh, its uh, x value so basically we want to move that uh, view uh, horizontally and here i want to add the uh, 1200 uh, float value okay so let me run the app now so you can see that and basically uh, when i click generate button then this uh, first uh, text input layout will move uh, on the right side so because we have a positive value here so uh, this value does not have a minus in front of that and that means that uh, when the positive value is applied then our uh, view uh, will move on the right side so basically if we imagine uh, here a canvas uh, then the zero value uh, for x and y axis uh, should be on the top left corner right here and basically the positive value for uh, our uh, x axis uh, would be on the right side here and the positive value for y axis uh, would be down below so from the top to the bottom and from the left to the right and if we uh, use a negative values that means that uh, our item will move uh, uh, to the left side to the out of the screen and that also applies to uh, y uh, axis so it will go up uh, outside of the screen and now let's uh, click generate button and you will see that our first field here uh, will move on the left side or sorry on the right side Okay, so as you can see, it uh, disappeared on the right side because we have also added the alpha animation here and the translation X by. So next thing, uh, we need to animate uh, our uh, plain text. So binding dot uh, plain text dot uh, animate. And here I also want to animate two properties. So the first one is alpha, set that to uh, zero F and uh, translate uh, dot uh, translate uh, or translation X by. And uh, here I want to say uh, minus uh, 1200 in float. And now this uh, plain text uh, will move on the left side, okay? And now I need to add the duration for those uh, last two animations. So let me just uh, add that now. So duration for those two uh, should be uh, 400 milliseconds as well okay and uh, down below uh, dot uh, duration 400 milliseconds okay so now let's run our application and let's see uh, how will that look like now okay so now when we press this generate button uh, you will see that our generate button and this title text view uh, will disappear uh, this first field or our text input layout will move uh, on the right side and this second uh, plain text will move on the left side so let's click that Okay, so as you can see now our views basically disappeared from the screen slowly and now after that we need to animate our two new uh, views so success image view and success background. So uh, after our uh, four animations I'm going to add the delay here and in order to use delay function uh, I need to add suspend keyword in front of our function so I'm going to add here suspend okay and now I'm going to call a delay and delay should be 300 milliseconds and after that delay I'm going to uh, basically create a new animation so first uh, I'm going to create uh, four different animations for our uh, success background so let's use binding dot uh, success background and first I'm going to uh, animate uh, alpha value so alpha value should be now to one because it's default value value is zero and basically now we want to increase its alpha uh, value so duration for this alpha value should be uh, 600 milliseconds okay uh, next we're going to use the same view again but this time uh, another animation so now I'm going to use a rotation or a rotation by so this one rotation by and here I'm going to add uh, 720 and this number is actually a uh, degree so I'm going to 
uh, rotate this uh, background two times and basically I'm going to set its duration now uh, to be uh, 600 milliseconds as well okay so next let's add two more animations for this view so success background dot uh, animate and next one is a uh, scale x by so scale x by and here I want to set uh, for example 900 uh, and of course you can experiment with those uh, values uh, by yourself I have already experimented with those values so now I know uh, which one to choose uh, so duration for this animation can be a little bit uh, higher so 800 uh, milliseconds and the last one uh, success background animate scale y by uh, 900 uh, as well so duration should be uh, 800 uh, like the previous one and now uh, we're going to run our application but before that as you can see we have uh, an error here so our new function named apply animations uh, needs to be run inside the core routine so I'm going to cut this code and I'm going to call a uh, live cycle scope okay to launch a simple core routine and inside the core routine I'm going to paste this uh, line of code so now uh, that error will disappear and now let's run our app okay so now let's see how will that look like Okay, so now as you saw, uh, when our uh, all views from the screen disappeared, then this uh, success background uh, appeared with uh, four different animations. So first we have changed its uh, alpha value to one because its default uh, alpha value was zero. Then we have rotated our uh, view uh, by uh, two times because we have specified here uh, 720 uh, degree. At the end we have basically scaled uh, this uh, view in x and uh, y by uh, 900 in value and now let me just run that uh, app again so you can check that out so when i click uh, this generate button then uh, our views uh, basically will animate and they will disappear and after that we have this small delay of 300 milliseconds and after that delay uh, this uh, success background will appear and it will uh, use uh, four different animations so let's check that out again okay so it looks uh, very nice and of course uh, at the end uh, we need to animate our last view here which is success image view and of course uh, after those four animations i want to add delay as well so this delay should have a 300 milliseconds and finally let's call a binding dot uh, success image view and here we're going to animate uh, only one uh, property which is actually alpha so animate dot uh, alpha and i'm going to set that to one so one f so duration for this one uh, can be uh, 1000 milliseconds okay so now let's run our app and let's see uh, how will that look like okay so now let's uh, click this generate button so now as you can see uh, when our all views disappeared our success background will uh, rotate and uh, it will show up and after that we're going to show this uh, success image view so let's run that again so you can check that out okay click generate all right so it looks uh, very nice and uh, we can even increase this uh, delay here for example to uh, 500 milliseconds so that our last uh, animation can uh, show a little bit later so now let's click generate okay so now it looks even better and uh, that will be all for our uh, animations on a home fragment and uh, lastly at the end i just want to create a new function here which will basically uh, navigate us from our home fragment to success fragment after this animation so now i'm going to create a new function down below so private fun navigate uh, to success and uh, here basically I'm going to uh, call a find nav controller and I'm going to navigate r.id. Uh, action home fragment to success fragment okay so now before I uh, call this uh, navigate to success function inside the core routine I just want to add a new delay function inside our apply animations so uh, after our last uh, animation I want to add a slightly delay before we actually navigate to our uh, success fragment so let's add a new delay function and I'm going to write here 1500 uh, milliseconds so that's basically one and a half second and now let's uh, call this uh, navigate to success function inside the core routine after our apply animations and let's run our app so now you will see that uh, when all our animations are completed and after one uh, and a half second of delay we're going to get navigated to our success fragment so let's check that out okay so as you can see now everything works perfectly fine okay so that will be all for this video uh, we have basically created uh, all animations we need for our home fragment and uh, in the next video i'm going to create some uh, transition animations between our home fragment and our success fragment so uh, that will be all for this video